Hello? Hey, Willie, how's it going? Hey, what's up, man? So, we got Deco Summit coming up, and I know you got a lot on your plate, but yep. we're gonna need 60 caps with the Deco Summit logo embroidered on it. You said 60 caps in total? Yeah, 60 caps in total. Okay, um, what do you need them for? I know it's late notice, but we actually need them tomorrow. I know you gotta get ready for the event and everything, but we really need this. Yeah, I have a 12 head downstairs. I can get it prepped in 30 minutes and have it done in like five runs. I believe the caps were delivered today. You might have to check the warehouse. All right, I'll go downstairs and check in the warehouse, see if we already got them in. But do you have the design? I'll go ahead and send over the design to you as well right now. Okay, bro, take it easy. All right, thanks, bud. Felix, what's up, brother? What's up? Hey, by any chance, uh, have have I gotten anything in? Uh, yeah, it's over there. Oh, in a man, thank you. I passed it. <laughs> Are these it? Ha! Here we go. We got the caps in. Even better now. Perfect. All right, guys. So let's see if we have the design so we can start working on it. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, perfect. We got it. All right guys, so now I'm gonna start digitizing the Deco Summit cap. The first thing I'm going to do is get the design and import it into Chroma. I'm gonna be using Chroma Lux. And if you guys wanna learn a little bit more about Chroma Lux, you can always scroll down to the description below. We'll have a link there for you. All right, so now I dragged in my design and the first thing I want to start off with is going to be the border. And this case, because it's a pretty simple design, I could auto digitize if I really wanted to, but then I'm, I'll have to go back and edit a lot of things. So in this case, all I'm gonna do is start off manual digitizing and finish it off completely manual digitizing. So now the first thing I'm going to do is create my border. I am going to click on ellipse and I'm going to make the circle. And now I don't have to be perfect with it because I could adjust it to be exactly where I need it to be. And now after I make the circle, all I have to do is convert it over to a steel stitch. And that's basically like a satin stitch, but it's, um, it only has one line pretty much. And I could always edit and take pieces out. That's why I convert it into a steel. I'm going to go in here and put a split line on this part of the circle. And I'm just gonna delete it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Split line, and another split line on the bottom. And now I'm going to select it, and delete it. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is use the steel stitch again, and I'm going to complete the border around where the Deco Summit sign is. And this is very simple, all I'm doing is just uh, pressing down the control button on my keyboard so that it can kind of make those waves. As you can see here, I didn't take it off in this corner. That's totally fine. I could always come back and edit that afterwards. So I'm just gonna keep going now. So now all I have to do is just make the small edits to make it look really nice. I'm going to add a point in this area here just to make it as straight as possible. All right. And let me go back to the other side where I didn't let go of the control button. And I'm going to just easily make it into a line. You could always right click, make it into a line, and you're back to where you should. And now you could also edit these little dots on the bottom. I'm gonna edit these dots on the bottom and make sure that that line is as straight as possible that goes with the design. Now, the next thing I have to change would be my density. I'm gonna switch it over to 0.3. I like using 0.3 a lot. Uh, it's just I've seen that it works the best. Not all designs should have 0.3, um, but you could always run a test, and that's what I do. I always like to run a test to make sure if, it, if it's good for this design or not. Now, let's go over and move to the other part of the border, which is gonna be the inside. I'm just gonna be going around the circle pretty much using the steel uh, stitch the same thing we were just doing. Now I am going to also change this into a 0 0.3 density, but I'm going to keep the same width. I'm going to leave it how the outside border is. 
Now that I finished the border, I'm going to do this small area here with the complex fill. I could easily use a satin stitch, but I do want to make sure that it doesn't get confused with the border. It's more of the back piece. All right, so now that we have this, the next thing I'm going to do is go to my complex fill and start filling in the purple and the pink. And I'm not gonna be very precise on this because uh, once you put the border on top, it'll cover any areas that doesn't look like it's perfectly aligned. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just put it anywhere as long as it's inside of that border. That's the reason why I did the border first so it could be easier uh, for me towards the end. Now let me switch it over to purple. Just very easy, go down here and do the same thing on the bottom. Now you do see here how it's still on the top. Don't worry about it. Once I'm done with this bottom area, I'm going to bring them both to the back. All right, so now I'm just gonna put them in the back by using a short key. And that's it. Now I am going to do the pink. And this is the same thing. I don't have to be too perfect because the border will cover it. And I'm using a complex fill for this one as well. Let's change the color over to a pink. All right, now just bring it to the back using the same short key that I used to pass. And there we go. All right, and now I'm going to cover the black piece here and do the exact same thing using a complex fill, turn the color into black and put it in the background. All right, so as you can see, I'm not going to be putting the D on the bottom where the black is, just because this design has a lot of little details. Now it does look great on the screen for a design that you're gonna be displaying on the screen, but when you're digitizing that and actually embroidering on something, that's not gonna look as nice. So I'm just completely gonna take it off. Either way, it says really big deco summit and we have some small details as well, like the palm trees and the little uh, buildings. So it's not really necessary. I'm just not gonna waste my time with that. Let's move on. All right, now I'm using a complex fill to do this, uh, these buildings, but after I'm done, I'm going to convert these into satin stitches instead of a complex fill, okay? So this is basically the same thing. Just uh, go and trace it. You don't have to be perfect with it. These, these are very small details, so you don't have to be very you know, precise on, uh, on these buildings. But for the tree, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more details actually. All right, so all I'm doing now is highlighting all the buildings and converting them into a satin stitch. Like I told you, I'd rather have them as a satin stitch because is going to stand out. And after this, I'm going to be editing it. Now, as you can see, I'm coming back to the same buildings that I just converted into a satin stitch. And I'm going to edit the angle lines and the split lines. Uh, once you convert into a satin stitch or into anything else, always go back and just double check because there's a lot of angle lines and the computer is basically trying to read as best as it can and all those small details. So I always go back and delete all my angle lines and create my own angle lines. And most of the times I do the same thing for uh, the split lines. All right, so let's select the buildings one more time. Let's bring down the density to 0 0.3. And now let's uh, do the same thing. Let's use our short key and bring it to the back. All right, now let's jump into the palm trees. Now for the palm trees, I'm using a regular run stitch and I'm just trying to go around as much as I possibly can. I am not going to be covering the inside because that's just going to be too dense and there's already stitches that are gonna be on top of that. All right, I'm doing the second tree now. To make the details stand out, I'm going to make these run stitches uh, stitch length just a little shorter. I'm gonna actually split it in half. It's at 3.0 right now. I'm going to make it into a 1.5. I usually don't like to do this, but since this is a very small detailed tree, I'm going to do as much as I can to have all those stitches very nice and tight in there so we can really see those details. All right, so now I'm just sorting these out to the back. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the buildings. All right, so I have a line that's going from the palm tree to the building, and that's just a uh, jump stitch. So I don't want that to be in there. I am just going to click on the building, and since the tree is the one that's in front of it, I'm going to press the trim button on the bottom corner here. 
All right, so I'm gonna bring the designs up to the front because I'm gonna start writing the letters. Let's write this down. There we go, Summit. And now I'm just gonna choose a font. Let me see which one looks best. So let me just go over and choose this one. I've used this one for small letters in the past and I know they work very well. So I'm just gonna use this and change it to a white color. All right, so now I'm just gonna make it smaller and add some space in between these letters. And go over to my underlay, take out the underlay because they're gonna be uh, pretty small letters. They're not gonna be super small, but small enough to take out the underlay. And now for the pull and push compensation, I just like to have them a little thicker because remember, those threads are gonna be pulling against each other. So if you have small letters, they're gonna be even smaller. So you gotta add some pull and push compensation so that they actually end up being the size that you actually want them to be. And for the pull and push compensation, I'm putting it at 130. And now that I've done all of these edits, I'm going to go and break them all apart. So I'm gonna have each letter on its own. And the reason why I do that last is because if I do it first, I'll have to do a lot more edits. So basically I'll have to do it on each and every letter when I could just do them all at once. So it just makes it faster. So the reason why I'm breaking these up is because as you can see, the letters aren't straight. They're actually going on a little curve, a little wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put them exactly where they should be. All right, so now I'm done with these edits and now I'm just gonna group them back together. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the bottom letters. And as you can see, they go with the circle. So we're gonna have to do that. It's very simple, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, the, actually, the software is the one that's going to do that for you. Uh, you just have to make small adjustments to it. All right, now before I do that, I'm going to adjust the size and I'm going to give the letters a little bit of space in between them. All right, so let's go to the density. Let's put the density at 0.3. And then the underlay, let's take the underlay out. I'm gonna press apply. And the next thing is going to be the pull and push compensation. Basically the same thing I did for the other letters. I'm gonna press apply. And now to make it into the circle, I'm going to press on this type. I'm gonna press circle and apply. And as you can see, it made the circle, but it didn't do it upside down. So I'm gonna reverse the direction by pressing this check mark here and it says Reverse direction. Now you can see how it looks exactly like it, but it's not 100% perfect. So now we do have to make some small edits. And now I'm gonna go back to the font editing tool. All right, so I'm using all of these dots to uh, make the adjustments. All of these do something different. So I'm just gonna play around with them until I kind of get it where I need it to be. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now let's go over and do the same thing to the top letters. And this time I'm not gonna put it as a reverse direction. I'm just gonna leave it as is. But like always, change the color, adjust the size. And this one I'm also eyeballing it, trying to get it as close as possible. Let's go and give it some space. I've been giving all of these just 10% of space in between those letters. That's good enough. Put it right over where it should be. All right, so I'm just trying to get it as centered as possible here on top of this circle. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. Density 0.3, take out the underlay, and, and add some pull and push compensation. And now let's go into the type. Let's put it as circle and let's leave it as is, but I will still make these small adjustments. So now I'm going back to the text editing tool and play around with these dots until I get it where I need it to be. All right, so I think that's good enough. Let me go over and make the small dots on the side. I'm going to use the artwork tool to make a circle and I'm just gonna do one and then basically just copy and paste it on the other side. So convert the artwork to a satin stitch. Let me zoom in so you guys can see a little better here. All right, I'm gonna change the color over to white. All right, so now for the angle, I want it to be sideways. I want it to start on the bottom and end on the top. As you can see, you have the green and red circles. Green is where it starts, red is where it stops. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste on the other side, and I'm gonna select them both and put a density of 0.3. And now all we have to do is delete the bitmap, and there we have it. All right, so let's take a look at how it will embroider. And that's exactly what the machine is gonna do. Oof, I actually don't like this. 
let's do something. Let's change the direction of uh, where it starts and stops and the angle so that it can start on one side and go to the other side as one complete stitch. So it doesn't have to leave any gap in the middle. Let's do the same thing on the bottom already. So I don't have to come back and do it. Now I'm gonna go back to my slow redraw. And as you can see, it goes in one run from one side to the other. So I'm just gonna do the same thing to the pink now. I'm gonna give it a little angle, start on one side and finish it on the other side. Now the reason why I'm putting the pink with a little bit of an angle is because I have the letters on the top and remember that there's a lot of stitches that will go from left to right and if you have the same thing behind it, they might hide. So if I'm giving a little bit of angle, those threads will kind of be uh, you know, on, on grabbing onto a lot more of that a complex fill. While if it's straight, it might just go into one of the areas where there's already a stitch there. All right, so really quickly, I just noticed that I forgot to fill in the background of where the buildings are. So that's one of the reasons why I love to always go back to my slow redraw so that I can see exactly what, I, what the machine is going to do. So this is very simple. All you have to do is get your complex fill, select the color, and do the same thing we've been doing with all the complex fill, is just trace the area and it'll automatically cover those stitches inside. And make sure that you go back to your selecting tool, which is up here. And we're gonna change the density to a 0.3, press apply. Now I want this to be behind the buildings. So let's go ahead and use the same shortcut we've been using with our uh, keypad here and bring it to the back. All right, and there we have it. So let's take one last look at it. Perfect. All right, so now all we have to do is test this design with the same machine that we're gonna be running it and see how it comes out. Hopefully we don't have to do any edits, but if we do, we just come back, make the small edits and perfect it. All right, let's go ahead and do it now. All right guys, so here we have the 12 head, the monster 12 head, I may say. Um, and we got the caps. Let's run the first test. I'm only gonna be using one head just to see how the design comes out. All right, we're all hooped up. Let's put it on head number one since I'm only gonna be running a test. Okay, so let's center it really quickly. Make sure we're right in the middle. All right, so let's go ahead and run the first test. I'm gonna press start. Okay. Let's see. Mm. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have to go back and make some edits. There are some places where it didn't trim and that's probably because I forgot to put it to trim. But other than that, everything else looks really nice. The letters look nice and, and crisp. That's basically all I have to do is add some trims and we should be set. All right, so this is very simple. All I'm going to do is select where I want the trims to be and I'm going to add a command to trim those spots. As you can see, there's those letters here that did not trim, so I'm just gonna click on the letters, and then over on the top here you have your commands, and you wanna go over where it says end command, you wanna click there, and you wanna go down to trim. Now you have other options that you can do with your machine. This is basically the commands you're giving the machine. So what I'm going to do is press the trim and now the machine will read a trim and it'll do it. Press apply. As you can see, now they're gone. And now I'll do the same thing to the other ones. Okay, that was very simple. So let's go ahead and save it and run the last test and see how it comes out. So I already have the design imported into the machine's memory and the colors are chosen. And now we just gotta press start.
right. All right, so now we're ready. No cleanup, it's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call uh, the prep line girls to come over and run the rest of the caps. All right guys, now I'm going to our quality control room, which is the prep line. We have some girls that always test the machines before you guys receive them. So I'm gonna go over and see if one of them wants to help us out with uh, running the rest of these caps. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, we need your help. We have 60 caps to run today, but good news, we had the 12 head and we only need to do five runs. Uh, we need them done before tomorrow. Can you help us out with that? Okay. Awesome, thank you. Let's do it. All right guys, so here we have Yusmeli. She's gonna be helping us out today with uh, the five runs. And we already have the design tested, so we're pretty much ready to go. Now I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips and tricks of what she's doing. Right now, she's just making sure the machine is ready, meaning you got the bobbins, you got the threads you need, all that kind of small stuff. And then she's gonna be going into the hooping. So we have a total of 60 caps, and on this big 12 head here, it's gonna take only five runs. So we should have it done by the end of the day. So all right, so as you can see, she's ready to start hooping and she is not putting any stabilizer because this is a pretty structured cap. So as you can see, she's double checking that it is right on the center because remember this is 12 heads, so they all have to be completely centered. And what she does is that she's following herself with the top of the hat that has a small line and she's connecting it with the middle plate, which in this case, this hat doesn't have any center seam, so it does become a little bit harder. All right guys, so this design has a total of 16,000 stitches. So between the trims and the color changes, I would say it's gonna take one run, 20 minutes. So multiply that by five. It should take us about an hour and a half for a little bit more over that. guys, so another tip that I got for you is hooping extra caps while your machine is running. So you can be as efficient as possible. As you can see, we're running the machine and she's doing the other side of the hooping at the same time. Now once this is done, we're taking these off and putting the other ones in right away, pressing the start button, and this way we can finish this in the next hour and a half or so. Guys, our second run is almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the first run, how it came out. All right, right away, I can tell the digitizing is exactly how we want it. We have all the trims on all the heads. It's good. She did a great job. She put it right in the center. Okay. All right, so let's check up on this in a little bit. It looks like it's all done because she's not here anymore. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. Nice. Okay, it looks like she cleaned it up very well. Okay. That's 60 caps in an hour and a half. That's amazing. And that's all thanks to this bad boy back here. So let's go ahead and uh, get these packed up and ready to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so as you guys can see, we're already packed up and ready to go. Hey, what's going on? What's up, man? Are they ready? Hey, they, yeah, they're ready, man. It that was fast. Right on time, I know. I owe you one. Okay, man. Thanks, man. All right, bye. All right, guys, 60 cabs and five runs on the 12 head all under an hour and a half. That's a hard day's work. Just imagine the profit potential. Each cab typically runs for around four to five dollars when you consider the blank cap and the thread and the supplies. If I sold each cap for around $20 each, that would be a profit of 901 days work. All right, guys, so let's go over really quickly the three pro tips of the day. The first one is that when you're digitizing for caps, make sure you start on the bottom and work your way to the top and from the center out. Now the next one is for those of you who have multi-head machines and that is centering your cap when hooping as much as you possibly can. If not, you could have some inconsistencies on your designs. And the last one is going to be for anyone with any machine and that is hooping your hats while the machine is already embroidering, that way you can cut your time in half. So if you guys like these tips or just want more videos all about embroidery, especially running on bulk orders, let us know in the comments below. Also, check us out on Instagram where we have over 25,000 followers where we share content just like this and host giveaways. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.